Howdy, this is Tubal Kane. Just a reminder that uh, please subscribe to my channel, Mr. Pete222, or you can also find it by looking under Tubal Kane, all one word. And I have over 300 videos on Machine Shop, and there's also some on old tractors and old engines and other mechanical things. Also, check out the LFE, which is stands for Learning from Experience website at www.lfe.com. And on there I have my complete courses on the Atlas lathe and South Bend lathe available. And there's also a free video on that website called Building a Sterling Engine, and that has not ever appeared on YouTube. Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again. This video is all about how to hold on to small work, mainly while you do hand operations. I'm out in my garage right now, and I love this big vise I've got. It weighs over 100 pounds. It's real old, but it's in excellent condition. But the jaws are 6 inches wide, and it's just not suitable for holding uh, real small work. That's a number 6 screw, sitting next to that Lincoln penny. And uh, also, uh, it's easy to crush something or break something with a real big vise like this. So let's retire to my basement shop and I'll show you several ways in which to deal with very small work and how to hold it. I'm now in my basement shop and this is my favorite bench vise. It's a Colombian uh, four inch jaws made in America by the way I think as are all of my vices and uh, sometimes this also is too big of a vice for real small work so here's several ways I deal with working with small work doing hand operations I got this little vice I've had it for years I'm not sure where I got it but it's a cute little thing and what's unique about it is the back jaw moves instead of the front jaw the front jaw is fixed but I have that fastened onto a scrap piece of angle iron and put that in the vise, in the Colombian vise. It just reduces the size of it, or the scale of everything, so it's very easy to work on uh, small pieces. Also raises it up a couple inches closer to eye level. So that's one uh, possibility. And it doesn't have to be this exact, exact vice as long as it's a small one, but avoid some of those cheap hobby things that you sometimes see at garage sales. A lot of these bench vices have uh, serrated jaws in them to grip the work, and I like those, uh, but sometimes they mar soft work such as brass or aluminum. So of course we have vice caps. These are magnetic. I think these are made by Wilton, but you can buy them made out of different materials, even like a urethane but uh, for smaller work and when I want smooth jaws what I generally do is take this palm grin vise which I have dedicated to the job and I've got it bolted onto two inch square tubing and then I put the whole kit and caboodle into the Colombian vise now the reason I turn that around backwards like that is when I do filing or sawing in a small vise uh, the screw is not in the way, it's toward the back, but of course you could do it either way. And these are smooth jaws, and there's also the little V-way vertically and horizontally in this Palmgren American-made vise. Now you guys that do real small work, like uh, clock work and model making and such, uh, appreciate these small vices. And this is a jeweler's vice, and you've seen jewelers work and uh, what small vices they have. Uh, but this one had to be, uh, would have to be attached to the bench or onto a block of wood and held in the other vise. And uh, this is an old one which I really like and it's, uh, it's nickel plated. It also has the uh, j rear jaw that moves and smooth jaw faces. So that's a nice little one and a tiny little anvil right here. And another possibility is using uh, a little drill press vise like this mounted to the bench, also smooth jaws. This one's kind of wobbly compared to a, a bench vise. It's really old. But I have a lot of vices, probably 20 of them in all. Not all that many small ones, but these are great for holding small work. This is called a hand vise. I'm not sure if they make them anymore. Possibly in the, like a Brownells catalog. 
wooden handle and you put your work in there such as this little nut if I was going to take it over to the grinder and uh, do some other uh, operation where this is too small to hold or would get too hot very quickly. This is a cheap little vise, it's just a die cast pot metal but quite serviceable for that type of job and we're talking about you know an inch and a quarter yeah inch and a quarter good eye tubal cane inch and a quarter wide jaws and they're soft I actually forgot exactly what this is called but it's like a large pin vise and uh, this is a number 10 screw but if you're going to grind the end of a thread or, or some way work on it and you want to hold it by hand that's a nice way to hold it and then you can put it right up to your uh, two inch grinder and hang on to it without fear of it flying out of your hands then have to spend a half hour looking for it or starting over and also it will not get hot and I have a whole bunch of other pin vices uh, uh, as well. Here's a whole set, but these are made over the pond, so I'm going to hide those. These are Sterrett and other good brands here, but these are great for holding real small work. Actually, I've got a scriber in there right now, but uh, they're nothing more than like a tiny Jacob's chuck. And everything's neural, so you can hang on to it. And uh, each one has a range. This particular one here is uh, double-ended two different sizes. So pin vices are nice. Here's another one and uh, this can be held in uh, the bench vise while you're holding something very small and using your needle files or up against your uh, little abrasive grinder or grinding wheel or abrasive belt. So those are pin vices. Now when you go to grind small pieces and you want to hold it in a plier, don't even think of this type of pliers, even though it's a proto. You know, it's going to move all around. That's absolutely worthless. Use your Bernard Parallel Jaw pliers. You may know them as a sergeant, but uh, the jaws remain parallel. And there's even a little bit of a V-way in here, a little groove to help you hold small uh, work. And you can get a pretty good grip on that, although it's still going to be somewhat of a vibration. So for uh, real secure work, you can also hold in a vice grip, and I've got several different sizes here. I like these needle nose ones, genuine vice grip brand, not some generic thing, and, or this type in the smaller sizes. And I, as you can see, I got these in two sizes, and really there's another one, a larger one someplace too, someplace around here. but. Your vice grips will work good, but they do put a mark on the work. That's why I tend to like uh, the Bernard or some of the other tools that I just showed you here. Sometimes I hold small round work in the lathe, even for hand operations. I'm not going to turn the machine on, but generally the bigger chucks uh, aren't good for small work and, and they, uh, they're in your way. So I like to put a smaller chuck into the big chuck, just a drill chuck, uh, with small work. If you don't have a shank on your uh, chuck, this has a straight shank, you can also hold the chuck surface right here directly in the three jaws. And these are readily available. You can buy uh, old drills at garage sales for a dollar and uh, just strip the chuck soft and throw the rest away. But this is a real good way when you're going to file or shape something. And then you can also rotate it into different positions. Also the use of a collet rather than a chuck if you own collets on a lathe is a wonderful way. If you've got collets to go that small and the collets will not in any way damage a thread if you're working on a threaded piece. You model makers and uh, gunsmiths are always working with small screws and some of them are very short, small in diameter and there's just really no good way to hold them. So I came up with this device. I, I didn't invent it. I saw it someplace. This is nothing more than a feeler gauge stock, and they're about 25 thousandths. You know, I counted up here and I had over 40 old feeler gauges. Not all old, but I had 40 feeler gauges. So I, uh, I thought, well, I'm just going to sacrifice a couple of these, and, uh, uh, you know, you can make all kinds of things out of this uh, feeler gauge stock because it is tempered. 
these weren't in very good shape anyway. But the point being here, uh, you can hold a screw in there, and as you grip it, it tightens it, and you can take it to the grinder or the little uh, belt sander and work with it without it flying and getting away from you. And to get it out of there, just slide it over, and you can pull it out. Now this is an eighth inch hole, but you can drill them any size you want, or you probably could drill several along here. This is hardened and tempered, so I used a solid carbide drill and went right through it. And on this end, that's just a number 540 uh, round head screw. And I did put a wavy washer in here, and then snugged it up real nice, put some Loctite. I love my Loctite. And that gives it just a little bit of a, uh, of a grip there tension and the nut won't come off. So that's just great for handling those small screws. And here's a variation of that that I also made. Some place or another in my junk drawer I had this clip here. I don't know what it came off of. Maybe a garage door opener or something like that. And I took a 25 thousandth piece of feeler gauge. I didn't saw it off because it gives me a little bit more to hang on to. This is set up just the same as the one I just showed you with an eighth inch hole also and this can slide off to the side or you can also bend it out to install your screw and as you're holding it again your thumb is pressing against that rather tightly because if you drop one of these screws or the grinding wheel throws it you're never going to find it and sometimes the screws are one of a kind, like from a gun, and you, you can't go down to the hardware store and replace them. It's a good way to hold it. Give that a try. They're free. Most of you probably have one of these wire strippers. This is made in America. Don't get the Japanese ones. You won't like them. Or the Chinese. Anyway, often we have to cut off a little screw. And this is a 440, but this goes up to 1024. And when you put them in to the correct threaded hole here, I'm sure most of you have used one of these, then you can measure how long you want it and simply cut it off. Now make sure you thread it in from this side because as you back it out now with the screwdriver, I can't do that with my hand, that will clean the thread up. However, it will be sheared on the end so uh, then you might want to put it in uh, the holders here and grind it smooth. But I like that method of cutting off threaded rod or small screws. If you just cut them off with the shear, you know, it buggers up the thread as much as I like my Bernard. In my model making, I use a lot of this uh, hobby brass tubing and it's also available in copper and aluminum as well, and, and sometimes even plastic. But if you try to hold this in a regular bench vise, usually you crush it or you, you take it out around. So one of the ways I like to, to hold that is to put it in a 5C collet in the square block. Or you can hold it in a 5C collet on the lathe, or a 3C for that matter, or even a three-jaw chuck. But this is a good way of holding uh, that tubing without damaging it while you saw it and file it. And the best handle of all is when you uh, make a project and you leave it uh, on the, the stock and the very last operation you perform is uh, cutting it off. And this is a project I made on one of my other videos for a South Bend lathe. But uh, always uh, make the cutoff as your very last operation because then you have a built-in handle. A handle to hold it by when you do your handwork and a way to chuck it when you have it in the lathe or the milling machine. And this part is square. I milled that square and then I turned this round. And then I heat treated it. And uh, it was very easy to handle. Uh, beginners often make the mistake of cutting a piece off to the final length and then it defies being held by any means. Now be sure and watch my many many other machine shop tip videos and take a look at my full courses on the Atlas and the South Bend lathe. And that information has never been on YouTube. Those videos have never been on YouTube uh, available free, but they are in my uh, full video courses which I offer both on LFE and 
uh, offer for sale on YouTube. I hope this uh, video was helpful on uh, holding small work many different ways for you model makers and gunsmiths. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.